adding and subtracting is a little bit more challenging because you have to have like radicals. So let's actually write that down. You must have like radicals to add and subtract. You must have like radicals. Now this would work with an x square or a, a square root. It would work with cube roots. It works with fourth roots. It doesn't make any difference. If I'm going to add and subtract radicals, all right, I have to have the same radical. Okay, most of the examples here I'm going to give you are going to be your square roots, but the exact same principle applies to um, cube roots, fourth roots, etc. Um, and really, let's start with a simple, simple one. Let's say I had a four square root of, I could even, let's do this first one as a third, a cube root of 4x and then minus um, a 9 cube root of a 4x. All right, so I look at my radicals. This is a cube root of 4x. This is a cube root of 4x. Those are like radicals, so I can put them together just like I would like terms. All right, so basically all I have to do is take care of that coefficient in front. 4 minus 9 is going to give me a negative 5. So then this is going to be a negative 5 cube root of 4x. All right, so like radicals get a like answer, just like like terms get a like term answer. Now let's suppose that they're not, because they're not all going to match. Let's do this one now as a square root. Let's do like square root of 8 plus the square root of 18. All right, I cannot put those together. I cannot add 18 and 8. All right, what I need to do is I need to break these up or simplify these. We did simplify um, square roots and cube roots and stuff in Algebra 2. You're going to do the factor tree concept. All right, but just keep in mind that when you do this, you've got to keep that radical over the numbers all the way through the problem until you get to the very end. All right, now the deal is I don't want to just come up with any old two numbers that multiply together to be 20 or to be eight there. I want the biggest perfect square root. All right, that's going to make my problem go really, really fast. Okay, so perfect square roots. Let's make a list over here. All right, so perfect square roots. All right, so what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about um, square root of four because that's two and I know that. All right, square root of nine, that's three. Square root of 16, that's four. Square root of 25, that's five. Notice I'm doing these consistently in order. Numerical order makes common sense here. Square root of 36 is six. And I could keep going, all right? You get the idea. I wanna take eight and I wanna find the biggest perfect square root that goes into eight. All right, now obviously this one's an easy one so you don't have to try it, you know, it's four. Um, but if that was a much bigger number, I would take the number divide by four, see if it divides. All right, and then I would take the number divide by nine and I would come up with the biggest perfect square. If I do that, my tree is very, very short. Okay, my tree is very, very short. But we said four is the biggest one that goes in eight. So square root of four times square root of two. I always put that perfect square first because it's a perfect square and I know I'm gonna be able to take the, take, figure it out what it is. So this is a two. So then this whole thing becomes a two radical two. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing for the 18. All right, this one works a little bit better. 18 divided by four, nope. 18 divided by nine, yes. If I do this, 18 doesn't divide by 16 and then by the time I get 25, it's bigger than my number. So it has to be the nine. So square root of nine times square root of two. And again, that perfect square root there goes in front so that I can just go three square root of two. All right, this plus sign needs to come down. Don't forget the plus sign. And then three radical two. This one was an easy one because the numbers are so small. Add, because now I have like radicals. So five radical two. All right, obviously the bigger these numbers are, then the more challenging the problem is going to be. That's not my goal right now. My goal is to just make sure that you understand when you add or subtract radicals, they have to match. All right, questions up to this point. Are we good? Okay. 